How's it going people? Car insurance can be a real struggle for people of all ages here in the UK, with premiums often limiting the types of cars we get to drive. However, there are numerous strategies that can be employed while getting a quote to significantly decrease that premium and make cars that could otherwise be impossible to afford well within our remit. Some of these may be more or less obvious than others, but in this video I'm going to briefly talk you through 21 different strategies that you can try to decrease those insurance quotes. For those of you that have been subscribed for a while, you may be wondering why you're seeing me driving very poorly on iRacing in the background. Those of you that follow me on Instagram will know that I mentioned I wanted to slowly work towards upping my weekly videos to two a week, with this slightly more conversational style of video being the other video. So treat this like a test basically. I want to take an interesting topic related to cars and just chat about it for a while, and show in the background either a racing game or a clip of me driving or something like that. Happy to take any suggestions on car topics that I should discuss, and whether you'd prefer to see me driving in the background or facing at a racing game. Anyway, remember to like, comment and subscribe as per usual, but without further ado, let's get into the video. For young drivers in particular, something that worked for me is putting someone experienced with a good driving history as a named driver on your insurance. I put my grandmother on my insurance, which helped take the price down by about 500 to 600 pounds on average when I was 17. But you could try putting on your parents if they've got fewer points in their licenses than mine do. You will reach a stage where it's more expensive to have that named driver after a few years, as for me last year I took my grandma off to save money. But for those first few years it can really save you an arm and a leg. For those of you that can afford it, the newer the car, usually the lower the quote. Back when I first got insured, 2004 was the Goldilocks year, where a 2003 car was way more expensive to insure, but 2004 was manageable in terms of car price and insurance price. But as a general rule, aim to buy as new a car as possible to take that quote down, as newer cars seem to be generally associated with better safety. Which brings me on to my third point. If insurance is your main aim, look for cars that have additional safety features that go above and beyond the average car on the road. Examples of these include the Toyota Camry, the BMW 5 Series, the Honda CR-V, those kind of cars. They're set to reduce that quote of yours significantly as insurers expect you to be a lot less dead in the event of a crash. For young drivers in particular, the cheapest insurance quotes come when you find a car that is less common amongst young drivers. I always mention the love of my life, my 2004 Skoda Fabia estate, which tragically died in 2017. But the reason why it was particularly cheap for me to insure is because it's got a reputation for being a much older person's car. Young people tend to drive the Fabia, not the Fabia estate. This is the same today in newer Fabia estates funnily enough, as I got a quote from my previous video at £1,200 for a 17 year old driver. Not bad at all. Another self-explanatory one is to buy a car with a smaller engine size. You can really get some good power out of those 1 litre EcoBoost engines in the Fords for example, as the engine is actually used in the Formula Ford cars. The lower the engine size, often the lower the premium you'll be spending on the car. One absolute gem I spotted is the Smart Roadster. I could insure myself on the Brabus version of the Roadster now for less than half the price I'm currently paying on my Polo, even though it has double the power. A key decider of insurance quotes is your geography, so I'm not saying you should move house to get cheaper insurance, but make sure you pay attention to insurance prices in the areas you're looking to move to if you are moving. Furthermore, if you're a student, have a look at how expensive it is to insure your car at your uni address. I live on the edge of London in a slightly more expensive area to insure, but when I was at uni in Bath, I was able to reduce my premium by over a quarter, which is a huge bonus as a poor student. Something that people often overlook but really should consider is actually calling insurance companies to get a quote. It's easy to get a quick quote on a comparison site, but if you actually call the company and haggle with them, you can often bring that price down. You may need to become a slightly more shrewd negotiator before doing so, but it can really help you pay a lot less. In my third year of driving, I managed to bring my original quote down by £150 just by calling the company and discussing with a real person rather than relying on a computer. But speaking of computers, a very unpopular way to reduce your insurance, but a way that's becoming increasingly necessary for young drivers, is the black box. For those of you that don't know, it basically analyses your driving to give you a score of how safe a driver you are, which then helps reduce your insurance quotes in the longer term. Some of my friends used it and it really helped them. Year 2 without black boxes, they had much cheaper insurance than I did, because I didn't use a box in my first year. That said, be careful which provider you go for, as some providers are harsher than others, and a bad rating could completely screw you on insurance. For older people, I would advise that you just don't bother with the box at all because it would just annoy you knowing it's there all the time. The level of cover you go for is also super important in your quote. You have the options usually of third party only, where your insurance will only pay for any damages that don't relate to you, third party fire and theft, where it's basically the same but they'll pay for you in the case of a fire or someone nicks your car, and finally fully comprehensive, which is what I would recommend for anyone. Younger people tend to be insured cheaper on fully comp anyway, and even though older people get cheaper insurance on third party policies, I feel it's a major risk 
risk. A friend of my dad's wrote off his brand new BMW M6 while insured on third party. What a good way to say goodbye to 60 grand. A simple one here, increase your voluntary excess. This is the amount of money you pay out in the case of an incident before the insurance company pays out. The more you're willing to pay, the lower your premium is likely to be. So if you back yourself not to crash and have the money to pay out for it if you do, I say go for it. I personally keep my excess between 250 to 500 because I don't fancy spending all my holiday money on a small crash. If you can pay the annual insurance fee up front, it's usually cheaper than paying in monthly installments, just because insurance companies like to rinse you for your convenience. A clever way to get around this on higher premiums as a younger driver is to see if a parent will pay for it on a 0% interest credit card, the kind that only starts charging you interest after a year. In that case, you then have the time to pay back the debt over time, without any extra money for the convenience. This isn't a strategy I've ever employed, but I can see it could be useful for some so I thought it was worth a mention. Something I did use though is a no claims discount or bonus accelerator which gets you your first year of no claims in under a year. Pretty simple concept. I use the six month one for students on Ensley, which I don't think exists anymore, but there are a few out there that you can still go for. These tend to be slightly more expensive, but they get you that all important no claims discount nice and quick, and it really worked for me. Something that I haven't done yet, but really should have done a long time ago is actually use space properly. So many garages in the UK are filled with random stuff that could either be cleared away or gotten rid of. And by saying on your insurance that you keep your car in a locked garage, you can significantly reduce your insurance quotes. I have a garage which is unused, but at least I can say I park my car on a driveway. You want to basically make use of whatever space you have in order to bring those quotes down. One thing I've only started doing recently but which is so helpful is ordering your next insurance quote or first insurance quote on a new car a few weeks before you actually plan on driving it. So if today is the 1st of January, you should buy your insurance for the 22nd of January or something along those lines. I honestly have no idea why but this really helps bring the quote down for some reason. And speaking of that, never just blindly accept your automatic renewal quote, they always try to rinse you for that. Every year I renegotiate my quote with my insurers rather than take their auto renewal quote and every year I spend less on that quote. I feel like it's just there to take advantage of you in most cases or at least in my experience. One thing to be aware of is if you're buying any add-ons like windscreen cover or legal cover or whatever double check with your home insurance first to make sure you're not buying something twice. Some other insurance quotes may cover these add-ons so by buying it again for your insurance you just waste money. This is obviously not relevant for those of you who don't bother with add-ons in the first place of course. Something I haven't done and probably don't have time to do is pass plus or the advanced driver certification. I know people who have done them and they do take their insurance down but remember that they cost money in the first place. You have to think about it from an overall profit perspective as in which is going to make you the smallest loss. Long term you'll probably save money by doing the courses and they're probably a good idea but they do cost both money and time of which I currently have neither. A point which maybe isn't quite as relevant for younger drivers but for the older people out there with jobs make sure you define your job very specifically. Well-defined jobs tend to help your insurance quote be lower so rather than putting gardener as your title put landscaping expert or something along those lines, for example. Play around with your job title until you work out which definition is cheapest. But back to the young drivers again, don't start modding too much in your first year. Mods can really affect your insurance at a younger age in particular, as insurers immediately stamp you as a boy racer. Instead, spend a little bit more money on a nicer first car and don't spend that money on modding. It will save you so much on insurance. Insurance expenditure is dead money, your car might not be so much. Or if you can afford it or are willing to go through with the maintenance, buy a classic and insure it on classic insurance. Limiting miles is one thing but actually getting classic insurance can really help you to have a low quote. I know quite a few young drivers who've driven around in classics and though they break down a lot more they pay a lot less on their insurance. Maybe even join a classic car club as they often have deals with insurers to get the quote down even more. I'll definitely be on this as soon as I can when I get my hands on a nice Lancia Monte Carlo. And the 21st piece of advice I have for you to save money on your insurance is be a female. Insurance premiums for women here in the UK are generally far cheaper than for men as you can see by these average price comparisons. So about 2% of the people that view my channel's videos are sorted. I'm sorry, but there's not much I can do about it. So I hope you found this video slightly interesting or useful, and for those of you that aren't from the UK, I hope you've had a little bit of an insight into the pain we Brits have to go through to drive our cars. People who watch the channel a lot, do let me know in the comments if you like the idea of me doing more videos on general car topics. And if you want more videos like this, let me know which car topics you'd particularly like me to discuss. I know a few people have sent across ideas on Instagram, which is much appreciated. If you want to get in the Instagram pot, link is in the description down below. Hope you've also enjoyed me getting rinsed on iRacing in the background to keep yourself interested. Let me know if you'd prefer to see something different in the background during these discussions style videos as I'm happy to accommodate basically whatever well not whatever but you know what I mean just to let you know I actually finished 11th in this race so a pretty poor performance by me but a fun race nonetheless as per usual remember to like comment and subscribe thanks very much for all the support so far and thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next one Listen.